You ready to do it? Let's have fun, man. Coffee and confessions. We affectionately call it C2, double C. Wait. Coffee? It's the gang sign, it man. You gotta rep your set, dude. It's a is C2. It, is it this way? This yeah, way? they might see it that way. I don't know how the camera and angle works or whatever. You know what I mean. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> we're not good at throwing gang signs. But we are, we love to have you here. If you're new today, welcome. This is Coffee and Confessions. I want to say cheers to you. Grab your coffee, whatever part of the day you join us. Uh, come on in here. We're going to give you a good word for your day. We're going to do confessions at the end of the show, right? That's right. Based off of God's word. Yeah, right off the word, man. And uh, if you're new, man, go ahead and put your name in the comments, right? Where you're watching from. We would love to shout you out next Tuesday, because but we're already going to shout out some of you right now that subscribed recently. And so... Here we go. We want to welcome Church Network Now. Yeah, Bruce 0922. Temple Wanderer. We've got the Protein Habit. What's up? Violet KG. Armina 01. Charles Lonzo 9847. Jocelyn Hopeware. That's good. I got it. <laughs> Some of these are hard to read because it might be a, a like it's a run on sentence without spaces. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Wilma Serrano. Yeah, and uh, 12 Miss 12. There we go. And Poyman 62. Yeah. Erica Woods, what's up, man? So glad you're here. We just want to thank all of our family members and all of you who are continual watching, uh, you know, part of the Coffee and Confessions family. We love that you're here. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, jot your name down in the comments. We'll shout you out next week. We'd love to do that. Hey, uh, we'll be right back. Check it out. Welcome back, man. So you get a good word starting now from God's word. And then stick with us because at the end of the show, that's where you get your confessions. That's where our viewers love. They love that part where they do the confessions with us. So uh, let's go right into it. Today, the word. Um, we just want you to see in yourself what God sees. That's right. the idea today. Psalms chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. Uh, Psalms 9, 1 and 2 says, I will praise you, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will tell of all your marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in you, and I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. O Most High. You know, I, I love this. You know, we talked about this before, but all the I wills, mm -hmm. all the, the us, you know, encouraging ourselves to, you know, no matter how we feel, no matter how we feel about ourselves, no matter how we feel about what's going on, and no matter mm -hmm. how we feel of our performance, mm -hmm. um, you know, our, our praise and our our, our view of, of God and who we are in him should remain the same. Definitely. Um, what does God see in you? That's, I think, a big question because there's this quote from A.W. Tozer, and I want to show you this on the screen here. Um, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed that you've kind of, it, it might not be in, intentional, but those that are in authority over you, we tend to mimic a lot of their their right. behavior, if you will. Like when your dad, your dad comes home. I've seen uh, TikToks about this recently, especially in my generation. When dad comes home from work, he's typically upset. Mm. <laughs> and then, you know, and he just, every, you know, mom's like, just leave your dad alone. Just go away. Everybody just, just go right. into their, it's maybe different now in today's day and age. But if he's upset, then eventually other people get upset or if your boss is upset, then you get upset. Or if you walk into a place and the customers are grouchy, then you get grouchy. Creates an atmosphere. Creates an atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And if we're always thinking that God's upset with us and like, he's always like, try again. Mm. <laughs> he's always like, stupid kid. Uh, when are you going to get your act together? You know, uh, treating us kind of like a redheaded stepchild. Uh, not that there's anything wrong <laughs> with being a redheaded or a stepchild. Such a phrase. All right. Yeah, it's not PC probably anymore. I probably can't say that. Probably not. It's all right. <laughs> but, um, but that's something that needs to change on the inside of us if we're ever going to realize that we're worth more than we think. Uh, and people are battling low self-worth mm -hmm. and not seeing value in themselves the way mm -hmm. that God needs them to. Boy, you know, that's really good. There's a commercial. I don't even remember what the commercial's for, but um, it's, it's uh, I think it's for like depression medication or something. But anyways, point is, is there's a... Um, 
like on a stick like a like a a face drawn on a stick like you know yeah. just like the smiley face or the frowny face or whatever right um and you know it it, it you see the people put these these masks on All right but you know what as you it's were accurate as you were saying that you know as you were talking that's what i was picturing is is you know whatever face we see god having hmm. is what we wear is what we put on that's it's, what, it's that's that what Tozer I, said. it's that identity it's that true. we have so you know it doesn't matter what we feel like mm-hmm. i think a lot of times our our relationship our, with god um we we think it's it's up and down it's well, it's and what are feelings based on that's the thing right you know when's the last time you had god physically in front of you and he told you exactly what so the only thing that we have is his word mm-hmm. and what happens is is people and the world take god and what he thinks and they refashion it and they're repackaging it yeah. and they're saying things that god doesn't say or they're misrepresenting things that are in the scriptures that's true and they're putting it in a way that makes you, you know, taking, you know, rightly dividing God's word is taking the Old Testament and the New Testament and understanding there's a divide there. He used to deal, he was teaching us that we needed a savior Mm -hmm. through the Old Testament law. It was a schoolmaster, but there was a division there and he was doing it on purpose. That was performance. That was him showing you and I that we can't do it on our own. We need a savior. But then the divide is now there's grace. We're in the the dispensation of God's grace and goodness in our lives, that he is good towards us, not based on our performance, but based on the fact that he created you, based on the fact that he loves you and he wants you to Mm -hmm. see why he died for you. I mean, if you're going to die for something, you see value in it, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's one plus one equals two. Absolutely. And so if God did all that, why would you do all that? Go and send your son and take him through the bloody death and and do all the stuff of the church and other martyrs and all this kind of stuff. And then get it, get him in your family and just beat the hell out of him after that. (laughs) Right? Right, Slap him around and tell him that they're bad kids, that he doesn't like you. Get your act together. But so many religious people, that's what they act like. It, it is, and and you know we we miss. I, I like I like that we misrepresent God. Yeah. You know we we miss, and that is based on our feelings and our emotions. Yes. And so many of the misrepresentations of who God truly is is based on feelings. Um, that's what the law does. The law kind of itches mm, that mm, fleshly nature, mm-hmm. and that's why some of us still hang on to that because you know if we do good, then we feel good. We feel yeah. good, and if we feel good, then we feel like God is pleased with us. It's all based on feelings. You know, if we feel like we did bad, then we feel like God's mad at us. And that's, you know, but it is, it's all based on feelings. And what we need to do is we need to, to draw up a picture of, of who God actually is and what he actually thinks of. And so when we're feeling, you know, if we're, we're putting all of our, um, you know, eggs in our performance and, and thinking that right. we're on top because of how there. good, um, yep. or if we're, you know, upset and, and kind of beating ourselves up because we missed some things we, we didn't do, um, we weren't, you know, enough or, or whatever, no matter how we feel, we, we pick up that yeah. identity and we, we put that You're identity picking it up on. from your dad, really. Exactly. And then, um, I didn't say this in the message cause I just didn't know, look, we get genes from both our mom and our dad, but your dad's genes are dominant. That's, they're more dominant. That doesn't mean that you don't receive things from your mom. Actually, sometimes you get more genes from your mom, Mm -hmm. but the the more dominant ones come from your dad. And so this is an important idea that the genes, spiritually speaking, that come from your your heavenly father, and you gotta know who you are in him. Mm, You know, uh, it's interesting if you look back in your life on the people that have have maybe your some of the people of your past, your relatives and where you've come from. I want to show you a picture of a couple men in my life. This is my grandpa, Perry, my mom's dad, who uh, he's an Italian. Uh, He his dad came over on the boat from Italy. And when he was a real young boy, uh, they changed the name. So we don't really know what his name is his last name, I should say. Um, so they just are like, they can't say it. So they just go, well, your name's Perry. And so they just changed it to that so they could grapple with it. He was uh, World War II. Um, he was in the army. He was a chef on a battleship feeding all the soldiers. And yes, the man could cook. He could cook some sauce. We did that every Sunday. He was a salesman. And so uh, he started his own car dealership called Perry Auto Sales in uh, Northeast Ohio. And uh, then we have, this is my other grandpa from my dad's side. Uh, I never really met him because he died when I was a, a young baby. 
Um, but he came over, his dad came over on the boat from England. The last name Earl that we have is uh, English. And so um, when he was a young boy and he was actually a football player, uh, one of the first professional football teams were from Northeast Ohio. It was in Maslin, Ohio. Uh, it's called the Maslin Maroons. They also played the Canton Bulldogs. And so, uh, so he uh, became a salesman as well. He sold uh, firefighting equipment to local firefighting departments and uh, raised his family through. They, they, my dad was born in the projects. He built all that he built. Both these men built all that they built. Um, and worked hard with their hands. They're called the greatest generation, these guys here. And isn't it something when you look back like that and, and, and anytime you're telling your kids, like you, your kids wanna know about where they're from. Like right. anytime I've been talking about relatives or anything, they always pull up a chair or like mm -hmm. I, I lend my ear to that. Cause I wanna know something about me. Who am I? Where'd I come from? What's this all about? Uh, what's in, you know, what's in, in here? How much more so when you read God's word, he's telling you who you are don't let other people form and fashion mm. and tell you what's inside of you. Let God tell you what's inside of you. That's good. And you know, if you get the wrong kind of, even sometimes it's other people, maybe even Christians that might mean well, but they just do it wrong. You need to get away from them. Mm. Bless them. God bless their heart. Love them from a distance. But you need to have people around you that love you, that value you. And uh, when, even when you're in a situation where somebody isn't and, and you can't necessarily get away, dude. That's good. You got to value you. you if good. you see what God sees in you, you'll value yourself and make others can't destroy your confidence based on how they're treating you. You know, when you value yourself too, the way God values you, you end up valuing others as well. When there is an outflow, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And it, it's easier to do when, you, when that happens. That's good. Confession number one, I am equipped and able to do all that I'm called to do because I am a son of God. Here we go. I, I am, am equipped, equipped and able to do all that I'm called to do because I am a son of God. God. Praise the Lord. The DNA of Christ Jesus, the victorious King lives in me. Here we go. The, the DNA, DNA of Christ Jesus, the victorious King lives in me. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hey, uh, like, subscribe and comment below. Yeah. If you're new and you're watching with us and you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. But uh, in the comments, put your name, who you are, yes, where please. you're watching from so we can shout you out. We'd love to shout you out. I really want to, we, we always do our new family from all our social media channels. I really want our YouTube audience to take some time to put your name and where you're watching from down in the comments and we'll make sure to shout you out. We want to celebrate that you're here and God brought you here. God bless you. See you on a home day. Oh.